the Wolverine. Who in the heck is that knucklehead anyway? Why should I give him more than two seconds of my time following his adventures on YouTube? The genesis of the Wolverine. Let's get into it. Team Wolverine, good morning. I'd like to take a minute and welcome you to the very first edition of the Wolverine Vlog. Not to be confused with the Wolverine Blog, that can be found at www.thewickedwolverine.net, the home of Wolverine University. There isn't any, isn't any actual blog written yet, I haven't started it, but as we make more content, I'll document it there and that's where it can be found. The Genesis of the Wolverine. Genesis meaning beginning for you pagans out there. No offense. Uh, who am I? The short version I would give you would be the Wolverine is just a squirrel in the tree of life trying to find a nut. But most of you all know me from being the ex-teammate of RVT, Red Viking Trucker. One of the cool things about teaming with RVT was occasionally we would run into some of his subscribers out on the road. And oftentimes they'd ask me, Wolverine, how come you don't make any videos? And I'd ask, of what? And they'd say, of trucking. And I'd be like, really? Like there's not enough of those around already? I'm not a YouTube guy. I have the personality of a wet mop. What more could I add to the conversation? But then I got to thinking of my life and what trucking has done for me and the theme of this channel is the power of self-reinvention reinventing the Wolverine and there was times in my life where trucking did that for me go back in time to the very beginning my dad was a truck driver and a short funny little story he used to take me out on the road with him sometimes in the summertime and uh remember one time this is in the mid to mid to late 80s he took me to Bayonne New Jersey to the Scott paper factory I think it was uh, he was picking up a load of diapers and he wasn't about to pay a lumper when he had his son with him so he said hey Wolverine how would you like to unload or load this truck up for me and I'll pay you I was like all right cool I thought I was gonna hop on a forklift and wheel in pallet after pallet of diapers like a boss but at 12 years old I wasn't allowed to operate any forklifts and I spent the whole afternoon from floor to ceiling front to back loading box after box of diapers and my payment for that day my dad took me and got me a banana split but that was some good times I really miss it and there are all kinds of good memories I have, have with him, so that kind of stuck with me. But I never thought, gee, when I grow up I want to be a truck driver. I kind of fell into it. When I was in high school, in my junior year, instead of going to lunch one day, I wandered into the library to do some research for a paper, and there was an army recruiter there. Next thing you know, I was in the delayed entry program, Delayed entry being where you go to boot camp between your junior and senior year of high school. And when you get out, you go do your AIT, your advanced individual training. And I picked to be a truck driver because at the time it was the Gulf War was going on. And it lasted off three weeks or something like that. So it was over before I even got out of high school. But I figured if there was any fighting to be done, I was more than happy to give them boys a ride. Um... My first job in the military was I got picked to be in the headquarters platoon as a commander's driver, which is a pretty sweet gig because whenever we were out doing FTX exercises, I didn't have to sleep in the pup tents out in the field. I got to sleep in the big comms tent. So that was pretty cool. But I got fired after about a year and a half, two years of that, because one of the things you have to do when you're out on FTX is drive, like I said, drive the commander everywhere, and 
you're up all the time. That's one of the bad things. You're, you're there's no schedule. Your sleep pattern's not good. And for three days in a row, I had to drive them about an hour and a half away to another area of operations so that he could meet. You know, because we we're doing training exercises. And for whatever reason, on the third day, instead of turning left out of the driveway to the complex, I turned right. And about an hour and a half later, he woke up and looked around and said, Where are we at? I said, I don't know, sir. I got transferred to 3rd Platoon and I had to spend the rest of the summer busting tires down with sledgehammers and a lot of elbow grease. Uh, but that was the Army version of... Uh, how I got into truck driving and for all those people out there that went to truck driving school and they had a difficult time with it being stressful moving a big truck and a busy street and learning how to shift all the gears and all that stuff try learning how to drive a truck with a drill sergeant as your instructor sitting next to you now that's pressure anyway I bounced at a bar for a while I worked at a harness racetrack for a while. Quick bar story. The, f the hardest I ever got hit in my entire life, no kidding. A little 4 foot 10 inch girl weighed about 90 pounds. I was trying to, I was breaking up a fight and trying to get her old man out. And my, my arms were pinning his arms behind his back. And I'm trying to get him out the door. And I saw it coming, but she went way back as far as she could. And I could see it coming. She caught me right behind the ear. If you want to knock somebody's lights out, that's where you hit them. I saw flashes of light. I saw little birdies. My my knees got a little jelly. Uh, didn't take me too long to figure that the 20 bucks I was earning in the night was definitely not worth it. But uh, as far as trucking goes, one of the trucking jobs I had was I worked... I grew up in Michigan in a town called Muskegon. And one of the jobs I had was working for a company called CTX out of Detroit. And that wasn't driving a semi, I was driving one of those big box trucks, but the kind that has a sleeper on it. So that uh, it's over the road trucking, but it's the best of both worlds. I don't have to haul a long trailer, worry about finding places to park. You whip in, you whip out, you can park just about anywhere, it's great. I delivered ice cream um, for a while for somebody. Not the little neighborhood thing that plays the song and the kids come like tractor trailers for of ice cream, did that. But I did other jobs, like I said, like the harness race track and the bar and stuff. But 1999, I moved to Oregon with the girlie and started a family. And while I was in Oregon, I decided I was going to go to school. I was going to uh, try to get into law school. And I went quite far. I was actually almost done getting ready to sit for the LSAT when I ran out of money. Student aid. Financial aid. And how that works is you got so much money for each phase of your schooling. And I didn't get the one phase done in time. So at the drop of a hat, all of a sudden there was no money. And I didn't have money for anything. So I ended up being homeless. The wife and kids had to go stay with the mother. I had to go live in my car. I did that for about two weeks. And then I said, to, to heck with that. I'll get back to law school. Right now I'm going to go back to trucking. And I haven't been back since. I've been trucking ever since. Um, but within two years of me being homeless in a car, and this goes along with the theme of the channel, I went from being homeless in my car to buying a beautiful home for my family in the mountains of Idaho. So when people say you can really reinvent yourself with truck driving, it's a fact. It's true. Because I did it. Now... The other aspect of reinventing yourself with truck driving is how to reinvent yourself to get out of truck driving. Now, I said that I have about a three to five year plan to transition out of truck driving because my youngest is 11. By the time five years rolls around, he's going to be 16. And I think dad needs to be around for those tougher formative years. But truth be told, I'll probably always have my toe in truck in one form or fashion. I'll probably do it till the day I die. Uh, but for the most part, um, I would wish to be home a little more often. So that gets me to the genesis of this channel. 
it's the transition out of trucking but kind of staying in trucking at the same time how do you do that how do I take more time off of not driving and keeping the income that I have at the same level so one of the things is passive income passive income being different than uh, earned income or portfolio income I'll explain the differences later as we get into it because some of the first videos that we'll do financial wise break it down what these different incomes are what uh, what you need to do to earn each one and the pros and cons that said everything else and then on the other hand is health because it's truck drivers as everybody knows if you don't stay on top of things your health can take a pretty big hit one of the things not a lot of people knows a long time ago I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes and that was kind of a shock coming from a guy who growing up I was you know an athlete I played football I wrestled I tried track for a couple years not so good not running I wasn't that kind of guy but field events but by the time I got into it, in like 11th grade everybody else was really good at it and I didn't know how to throw a discus work to save my ass but or a shot put throw your shoulders out with those things um, but I was a pretty good athlete I even played semi-pro football for a little while um, for a couple seasons tried anyway um, so when I got diagnosed with the type 2 diabetes that kind of threw me for a loop and in truck driving everybody they say everybody if you go get a, a a1c test um, they test your blood averages of glucose for three months almost 90 percent and I can't cite the study right now but I can find it and stuff we'll go into this when we get into the into the videos for the health part of it but about 90 percent of the population because of the high sugar diet we eat is insulin resistant has metabolic syndrome pre-diabetic I ended up going full diabetic but I did learn that you can reverse it so I don't have diabetes. I don't take any medicine. I got a two-year medical card. I am asymptomatic. I will be diabetic my entire life, meaning if I go back to the way I used to eat and not move around and stuff like that, it'll come back. But right now, it's, for lack of a better term, in remission. So anyway, that's what the genesis of this channel is going to be. We're going to reinvent the Wolverine physically, meaning I'm going to drop a whole pile of weight. We're going to uh, start out with some fasting, long-term, water, salt water fasting, and go into uh, uh, a keto OMAD for long-term, and we're going to go from 220, which is what I weigh now, down to 180 pounds. We're going to do that from July to December. On the financial side of things, we're going to go from zero dollars in the bank account that I'm setting up to enough money to buy a slum house that I can fix up relatively nicely for relatively cheap and turn it into a rental and then turn around with what's called the Burr strategy which I'll explain in more detail what that means later where I can get house after house after house up to as many houses as you want or until the bank won't loan you any more money then you go on to the next way of doing it and we'll go into that and by the end of December, I hope to have the first rental house. Because I have my eye on a couple. It's not going to cost a whole lot to buy. It's going to be a pretty penny to uh, fix up. But uh, just buying it and having it, I can spend six, eight months to do what I have to do to get it up and going. Anyway, that's, that's the genesis of the Wolverine. That's who I am. You can choose to come along, you can choose not to come along. You can choose to participate. Well, one thing I will say, last Monday I said, at the time I had 57 subscribers, that if I we got up to 100 subscribers by Wednesday night, I was going to, and everybody that wanted to do it, put I'm in in the comment section, I'm in, and we got up to 100 by Wednesday night, that I would send them $25. That was Monday. Wednesday night at 8 o'clock at the deadline, I had 57 subscribers. So that wasn't going to work. So this thing's going to build up a little bit more slowly from what I'm thinking. 
a uh, little bit more organically uh, you guys are in on the ground floor man you guys are my ride or die guys um, if you could be of help I'd appreciate it to like subs uh, like 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 share and subscribe I can talk a little bit need more coffee um, if you could help me out by by liking sharing and subscribing I'd very much appreciate it and I am going to change it so that the deadline is already here and gone as soon as I get up to 100 subscribers I'm gonna post a video and everybody that wants to try to win the 25 bucks type I'm in I'll find a fancy way of random randomly picking a random person send them 25 bucks I'm gonna post videos every week Saturday will be the physical health video <clears throat> Tuesday is going to be the financial video and periodically throughout the week at least two times I'll do a random blog video where I'm just talking to you um, once we get up to a thousand subscribers which will probably be at this rate when I'm about 97 but once we get to a thousand we'll do the same thing with the I'm in thing and it'll be a hundred bucks so if you would like to help this along and would like to like share and subscribe I'd very much appreciate it and now you know more about the Wolverine and I think even Red Bike and Trucker did but that's our secret have a good night